Hey guys, my name is Dave and welcome to another video. So, I just finished watching, um, for the first time, the live action version of Mulan. Um, and it got me thinking, after watching that, it made me think about one particular detail. Because I started thinking about like how people were, like the ratings it got, the criticism it got, the support it got, yada yada yada. It made me think about one specific thing. How I approach films based off of older stories. That one's a pretty good example, in my opinion. Personally, and I'm going to get a lot of backlash on this if anybody who's seen the movie disagrees, I loved the movie more than the animated one. And I really love the animated one a lot. The reason for this is because the live-action film resembles the actual Legend of Hua Mulan so much more. And this is just like one of several examples I can give of why I do or don't like films, whether live-action or animated. And a lot of these are actually Disney, just because I love watching Disney films, but... And then again, Disney owns almost everything anyway, so I'm gonna... I digress. Um, another good example of this, of one that I actually look down on, I still like the movie, but I kind of look down on it, and I am going to get a lot of backlash for this one, Frozen. The reason for this is because it does not even remotely come close to following the original story of the Snow Queen. For those of you who don't know, and this may ruin your childhood, so just fair warning, the reason for that particular one is the the story of the Snow Queen. First of all, there's no human villain. Not not really. The villain of the original Snow Queen, who, for those who don't know, in the book, it's actually a king that lives inside a mirror that the woman who is the Snow Queen found, and grew kind of attached to. The action of Hans from Frozen don't exist in the Snow Queen at all. If, if, I'll say this much, if Disney stuck with their original story from Frozen, where they were going to, for those who don't know, they were originally going to have Elsa be the villain. If they did that, they would have come at least a little bit closer to what the original Snow Queen was. I would have been more accepting of that. I still like the movie, don't get me wrong. I just don't like the fact that it's not like the original. That's a good example of a bad. One, one that I frown upon because it's distant from it. One that I have mixed feelings for, though, ones that I have mixed feelings for, would be comic-related films, DC and Marvel. Now, I do not like DC movies. I don't. After the Batman vs. Superman film, I was just like, I'm done with the exception of the Wonder Woman films, but that's it. However, I can say one thing's for certain. They do pretty dang, they especially the Batman movies, do an extremely good job at sticking to the comics and their eras. For those who don't know about what I'm talking about there, comic books had eras. Bronze Age, Silver Age, and Golden Age. There was a large difference in spike on how they had to be written because of these different within these different areas eras the bronze era anything goes but then a group that i actually do forget the name of they kind of ran how things would go how what you were allowed to do in comics how gruesome you were allowed to get and it took a lot of degrading to line up with that during the silver age a, p a perfect example of this would actually be the Batman series. So, there are three notable films that are, or s series of films that are Batman. One from the 60s, where the Joker is kind of one of the mains, and he's just a goofball. He's just like a prankster. The 80s movie Batman, where the Joker, he's, he's a villain, but he's not a psychopath. And then, The Dark Knight where Joker's just all-out psychopath. These three different Jokers actually do represent the three different eras. The Golden Age is the psychopath. No. Golden? 
I think Bronze was the first one. I get these mixed up sometimes. The first era had the Psychopath Joker. The second era had the Prankster, and then the final one had the, um, kind of just, he's the villain, but he's not too psychotic kind of Joker. Like, that's, that's a good, really, really good example of the kind of thing I'm looking for. That's why I like the Batman films before Batman vs. Superman. Afterwards, everything just went downhill, but all of those Batman films I really actually thoroughly enjoy because they symbolize those time periods beautifully. Superman does the same thing, actually. It does it kind of in a scatterbrained way, so I don't think it's as good. But enough praise towards the DC films, Marvel films, holy crap. The MCU is just taking like every angle from every time era and just mashing it all together. <laughs> and somehow doing it in a really, really good manner. Like, there's just no stopping them. <laughs> but I'd pretty much be reiterating exactly pretty much what I said prior to this. They stick to the comics enough to where it still makes sense and it's enjoyable, like what DC used to do. Now, I think that's kind of a good example of ways to look up on them. It was kind of after, like, during... It, there's a reason I like DC games more than Marvel ones as well. Marvel ones have a tendency to go off and do their own thing sometimes. DC always kind of stays to the actual you know, comics, and doesn't, like, create some fancy-schmancy what-the-heck-is-going-on kind of situation. Not from what I've seen, at least. Not that they're just finding very, very, very good development teams like Telltale to be able to do stuff like that. That being said, back to movies. Um, I think one more example I'll give off, and then I'll wrap this up. A good example of, once again, Disney, uh, that I think... I'll do one more example of each, good and bad. A example of what I think they did right was the remake of The Jungle Book. Matched the story perfectly. I've read the original Jungle Book. As detailed as it can be, there were a lot of details from the original story left out of the animated duo from back in the day, but the live-action version hit home on pretty much every single angle on that. It was, And it's still still stuck to the charm of the animated film. It's the same reason why I like Mulan so much. Fine, yeah, for Mulan, Mushu's not in there. Oh, no, there's no singing. So? So? That's never been a problem to me. But as for the Jungle Book, they do keep the music, and they do it beautifully. They don't break the Disney charm, and they don't stray from using the actual story either. Like, they added in the details that were in the story that they left out in the animated one, because, you know, the animated one was for kids, but even so, it's kind of a good example of a good. good example of a bad one would be The Lion King. Now, everybody's probably gonna agree with me on this one. The CGI on that sucked, and it did not stick... Like, The Lion King, first of all, I frown upon The Lion King anyway for one reason. It's based off a of Japanese animation. It pretty much ripped the story from a Japanese animation and made it called it their own. This was this is old news, but still not a lot of people know about this. That particular detail when I found out about that story was just like, yeah, good job. You stole from Japan. Good job. But at the same time, the story itself is still very compelling in the animated one, and it does let you actually feel for the characters, whereas the live-action one, it does the same move again, except this time it's pretty much blown over, it doesn't matter anymore, which it really doesn't, it's in the past. Hakuna Matata. <laughs> but that's one thing that kind of upset me about that one as well. Yes, there were songs there, but they didn't have the same kind of soul. It didn't stick to the original story entirely and it kind of upset me anyway those are my thoughts on like how i look at films based off or other original stories what do you guys think would you prefer do you prefer to look at it this way you think it's overanalyzing 
if it's over overanalyzing, it wouldn't surprise me at all. But <laughs> let me know in the comments below. I'm genuinely curious. Um, if you did like this video, though, one way or the other, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't say it anymore. And if you really liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. I do a live video like this every day, regardless of whether I do a gaming video or not. Speaking of, want to check out other content that I've done like this that's either me talking about myself in some kind of way, whether about my personality or my past. Uh, click the link on this side. Want to check out discussion rants like the one I did today. Uh, some of them are rants, which I wouldn't recommend always watching. The discussions are pretty interesting, though. This side. In the meantime, though, I'm going to head off. Thanks again for watching this video, guys, and I hope to see you guys in another video. Bye for now.